What is up everybody, Vic Almighty here at Hat Club. They have a sick pop-up right next to many rolls. They have so many clean hats. We're about to do some shopping. I really wanna get some cool, vibrant hats because I plan on doing a custom. We're gonna take them apart, make a shoe out of them. So let's start shopping. Dude, this one's a must. Three Ace, pink, green, Arizona. So after looking at all these hats, there's some really sick ones. I'm trying to think shoes because a lot of these hats I wanna wear for myself but I'm thinking vibrant colors. This, for example, is kind of one that I really like. It has the vibrant pink, green, and Arizona. So let's kind of look for those kind of colors, something vibrant. What do you think? <sighs> I might have to go with the three A's on the green one too. Green and red. Got three of five. I'm thinking we're gonna need five for this custom. I got three Arizona hats. I do want to get other teams, but at the same time, they did a good job with these Arizona hats. We got green, purple, and pink. Let's see what else we can find. So this one's pretty cool. It's another Arizona Cardinals hat, but I'm thinking, I have a lot of colors. It might be nice to balance it out with some white. I like the orange on it. Put it in the basket. Might change my mind, but we'll put it in there anyway. Actually, change of plans. Oh. It's a cool hat. We do need some white. Another Arizona Diamondbacks hat. At this point, let's just get Arizona Diamondbacks hats. All right, so I'm thinking, this one's a fire hat. Cool, clean colors, yellow and pink. That gray we don't have anywhere on these other hats. Same thing with the teal. Show with this one. So we just dropped about 786 bucks. Now we need some shoes. Let's get to work. What's going on everybody? Vic Almighty here again. And today we're gonna be doing a project that's never been done before. We're combining two of my favorite things in the world, sneakers and hats. But this one I'm gonna need a lot of help with. I can't do this one by myself, so I brought my good friend from Las Vegas, Jordan. He does some of the cleanest builds I've ever seen, dude. Thank you so much, man. I'm excited to be here. Listen, I've made a lot of shoes in my day. I've never, ever used hats before as part of it. I'm excited. I say we get to it. It's gonna be different, man. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, dude, it's time to deconstruct these hats. These are some pretty expensive hats, so let's try not to destroy them. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. What's the strategy here? First things first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, brim and separate that from the crown of the hat. All right, let's use some X-Acto knives. Let's do it. When it comes to shoes and hats, there are two of my favorite things in the world. Since I was in middle school, I would save all my money for a pair of J's or Nikes, and afterwards, I would always go straight to Hat Club to find a matching hat. They've been one of my favorite companies for so long because of the quality hats and being based out of my home state, Arizona. I'm proud over this little button. <laughs> Does it look better with the ears under? All right, dude, I have a pretty good idea on how you started customizing sneakers, but you want to tell the audience how you got started? Uh, I first started customizing during COVID. I had some pairs of shoes that were sitting in the closet and I decided to you know, try my hand at painting them. Um, and then I decided a few months later that I wanted to get into the actual art of shoemaking and sneaker making. So I found a class online and you know, took it from there. All right, so we got three hats fully taken apart. We went with the green one, cream, and white. We think those are the best colors. So far, so good. What's next, Jordan? So right now, we're gonna basically be mapping out where we are going to utilize this material. So I've got our pattern pieces here, and I think we should start laying them out and figure out what, where we go from here. For sure, I mean, we have some cool parts to work with, like these little holes, mm -hmm. the patches and stuff, so. I love these MLB logos too. Yeah, we just gotta be strategic, I guess. Right? Yeah, absolutely. We have enough to put it there, so I think that's perfect. And then we can go here, we can go here, and then it'll also clear up the MLB logo just in case we do want to utilize that in the future. We'll be able to pull that in as well. Having the little vent holes that you see on most baseball caps. Um, that, was a, that was a detail that we, know, that we noticed right away that we really wanted to utilize. So what we did was on the eyelet pieces, those are the pieces that the laces go in and out of, we decided to utilize one of those holes and repurpose it as a middle lace hole. So you'll see on the final project, there is one hole that has that embroidered kind of buttonhole look, or look to it. Um, we also use that same detail smack dab in the middle of both toe boxes. Um, so you'll see that detail as well. While Jordan's tracing out the patterns, we're gonna move on to the donors. We got these perfect Kelly green and white outsoles. This is a perfect representation of most Niera hats. On the underbrim, you got that green. So we're gonna go ahead and first remove the laces and remove all the stitching before we use some acetone and heat to remove these outsoles. Uh, 
When we first went back and redesigned the New Era project, we already had a couple of the materials ordered. We had a very, very light pastel pink and a nice mint green. Um, we had the idea to do a Kelly green outsole to really represent that classic green bottom of the brim that you see in a lot of uh, New Era baseball caps or baseball caps in general. So we had the green soles, we had the mint green material that we knew was coming. So when we went back to redesign, we wanted to try to utilize what we already had. And we landed on doing a monochromatic green colorway shoe and then brightening that up with some whites and cream so it wasn't all green. Going into the design, we wanted to really make sure that we were utilizing the hat material, but we didn't really know what that would look like or how it was gonna work or really how the material would be like to work with once we got there. I've never deconstructed a hat before in my life, so it was very interesting. They're very simple, but there isn't a whole lot of usable space. Uh, there's just a lot of small panels. So finding big, clean pieces of, of fabric from the hats was the, probably the biggest challenge. Um, so then you, once you solve that, you also wanna make sure that it looks tasteful and cohesive and that it doesn't look forced or overdone. Um, so, for example, we were utilizing some larger hats, uh, I'm sorry, patches that you'll see on the, the temples of some of the hats, um, and we put it on the medial side, the inside of the shoe, really just to showcase it, but we didn't want to make it too focal by putting it on the outside, nor did we want to take too much away by covering it with a swoosh. So you'll notice on the final product, the lateral side has a swoosh, there's no patches, but then on the inside, there's a beautiful patch and we didn't want to take away from that, so we did not put a swoosh over it. All right, now that we have all of our pieces cut out, next thing we have to do is back them. This part is very important. As is, the hat material is too flimsy, this is gonna give it some structure. All right, we have our hat pieces cut and backed. Next, I have this beautiful mint green patent leather that we're gonna cut a couple of pieces out of. Um, we also have this smooth eggshell, kind of an off-white um, leather that's really nice for the swooshes. <clears throat> we're gonna cut those out. We're gonna prepare a couple of the pieces by skiving them, just taking a blade and making them a little bit thinner. And then we're gonna start piecing this shoe together piece by piece. Before you came out here, we had multiple phone calls discussing the concept for this specific sneaker. But once you came out here, we completely changed that concept. Can you tell me a bit about the design process? Yeah, the New Era project was one that we thought we kind of had a good idea when we sat down initially and we were doing an Easter theme. So using some pastels and some patent leather, some stuff that Nike has done in the past with their Easter releases. Um, but we figured out as soon as I got here that the timeline was just off and we weren't going to be able to get that project debuted to the public in time for Easter, which is on the 9th. Um, so we decided to completely just go back to the drawing board and we really wanted to make sure that we played into the new era aspect of it and we really leaned into repurposing a lot of those hat materials. Um, I love the way that the project came out now. I'm so happy that we did end up going back to the drawing board and changing everything up because I'm so, so happy with the final product. I think there's a handful of customizers that inspire me. Um, Vic has always been somebody, not to, not to name drop Vic, but Vic's always been somebody who I've really looked up to. I think his consistency over the years um, speaks for itself and obviously the quality of his work uh, really kind of helps him sh outshine uh, even some of the best painters in the game. So he's one, Shoe Surgeon would definitely be one that I looked up to. Um, Chase Shield is somebody who would help me out. He's from Australia. He helped me out a lot when I was first kind of uh, starting out. Um, Minute Maid Poppy was one that taught me, you know, pattern making and some certain things. So I'm really happy to have met him. Uh, there's a lot of people and, and just kind of pulling those inspiration from the people that I see doing it. All right, bro, it's pretty freaking late. It's two in the morning. You want to give the guys a progress report? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, two in the morning, but uh, we're hanging in there. <laughs> 
Uh, my flight is tomorrow at 8 p.m. So we have kind of one day and um, we did have a little bit of trouble. We had some, uh, some material get caught up in customs with uh, coming from Italy. So that, that put us back a few days. Yeah, normally we wouldn't be working until two in the morning, but we got to get this project done. He's out of here tomorrow. We only got a few hours to wrap this project up. We have all the materials, but it's kind of home stretch from here. Off camera, we have been working on the second shoe. I don't want you guys to believe that I've just been sitting around doing nothing. I have been doing some work. Do you want to tease them on how the shoe's looking? Let's make them wait. I hate to do it. Let's make them wait. Yeah, let's hold off. But I can say that we have our um, upper completed, at least this portion of the upper completed. So now what we have to do is add our heel counter. Um, and then we're also going to sew in our liner and add our foams. Once we install the liners, we're pretty much, uh, we're pretty much ready. It's two in the morning. Hopefully we're out of here by what, four? Oh man, I hope so. Let's call it 3.30. Almost half of my collection is stuff that I either restored or customized that I wear almost every day. Do you wear your own sneakers? Um, yeah, I'd say I wear my own customs probably three to four times a week, maybe two to four times a week, depending if I'm not wearing you know, some retros or something else. I, I grew up a shoe head, so it's hard for me to continuously wear <laughs> you know, the same few pairs, but um, anytime I'm not wearing like you know, some Jordans or something like that, I usually try to make a, wear a handmade pair. All right, so we have our liner installed. We have our holes punched, and this part of the upper is done. Over here off camera, we took care of the front area of the shoe, cut out the mint pound leather, sewed it onto the toe box. We also attached the liner in the exact same shape. The tone was really easy. All we needed was five different parts, the front, the back, the foam in the middle, the binding, and this MLB logo. We stitched it all together. Now it's time to attach the entire thing together, right? Exactly. Once we get these together, we can last this shoe, and then we'll have a pair. Let's do it. During this process, there was a couple issues we ran into, but we overcame them. What was the biggest one in your opinion? The first few days were, were pretty straightforward. We were able to get through them, kind of shorter days, but we were also waiting on the materials to come in from Italy. So we knew that we kind of had our work cut out for us once that material came in. Um, so we were pushing the project along, trying to get everything that we possibly could get done. Um, and then once those materials finally came Thursday afternoon, uh, we had to kick it into high gear. So the last couple of days, because I leave today, we had to pull some long nights. We left yesterday, or I really should say this morning at about 3.30 is when I left. I, I, I know I wasn't the last one here. Um, and then right back again at it at 10 a.m. All right, so we are back. We had to take a little bit, bit of a break and get some sleep last night. We got a few hours. My flight's in about six hours, so we really gotta get this project moving. Um, we gotta last this shoe, which is gonna be starting off with these lasting boards. I'm gonna nail them to the bottom of this last, and then using nails, I'm gonna pull the leather around. Jake, you're gonna be working on the insoles for us? That's right, man. We're on to the finishing details. We gotta take care of these insoles. Off camera, we took care of this vinyl. We printed it out. One of them is a New Era logo, and on the opposite one, it says New Era. Simply what we're gonna do is iron it onto these green insoles. In the last couple years, I've worked with a lot of talented artists such as Dane Customs, Who Fresh, Flippin' Kicks, A1 Restorations, so many more including you, Jordan. Do you have anybody you're looking forward to working with in the future? I think working for or with Nike in any capacity, even as a contractor on a special project, would be something super fun to me. Um, Nike's always been a big part of, I think, why I love sneakers and, and kind of always was that driving force behind it was the Air Jordan and Nike <laughs> you know, models. So being able to work for the swoosh in any capacity or, or with them would be a big dream come true. All right, we have majority of our shoe lasted. Now we have to put this toe puff. It's gonna go right here, just around the edge of the toe, and it's gonna give it a little bit more reinforcement.
When it comes to customizing shoes, I can name 10 things I have a hard time with. What is the most challenging part you have as a customizer? Yeah, I think as customizers, uh, the stress is always trying to come up with the next concept and to continue to be creative and to continue to push the boundaries. Um, so I think going into each project, it's how am I gonna set this apart from what I've done in the past? All right, so we have our shoes all lasted and the last step is to attach the soles. I'm just gonna set these in here, make a quick line right around where the soles meet our shoe. And then Vic is gonna take care of the dremeling and the sole attachment. Prep is complete. For the pan leather, we got it nicely roughed up. It's ready for the re-glue. That step can be really scary because if that Dremel slips onto the pan leather, there's no going back. For me personally, the pan leather on the shoe is my favorite detail. What's your favorite part or detail on these sneakers, bro? I think my favorite part of the sneaker is either the heel tabs or the tongue tags that had the New Era and MLB logos on them. Um, I say that because there's not a whole lot of room. We had to be very strategic about where we were pulling from, how much we were cutting and where we were getting it. So being able to utilize those embroidered pieces um, in a way that was nice and cohesive and added a lot of really fun elements to the project was nice. Glue job's done. I still gotta stitch it. Can you remove the last? Absolutely. Let's crack this thing open. I'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to get some clamps. Got the shoe off the last. The shape looks beautiful, you guys. The next thing we're gonna do is add the stitching throughout the entire sole. We got our two pieces of white thread and our sewing gall. Stitching is complete. We do got our brand new insoles with the new era logos. Let's lace them up. Let's do it. All right, dude, I'm not even lying. I'm tired, but this is one of the sickest shoes we've done on this set. It's so creative, bro. Oh, thank you so much, man. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think they're absolutely amazing, especially considering where we started where, versus where we ended up. Um, I couldn't be more happy with the results. Exactly, we changed the entire project in one day. We changed it from an Easter concept to what we have now, and I think we made a great choice, bro. I totally agree. I can't even imagine having the project turn out the way it started because I'm so happy with the way that it finished. So like I said, I'm just so excited and so happy that we were able to pivot and I mean, look at the final product. I just wanna say, dude, thank you so much for coming down and working on this project. I wanna say you make this process look so simple. I learned so much. The process is pretty straightforward. I can't wait to make a dunk on my own. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And thank you honestly to you and the whole Rejuvenator team. You guys have been such amazing hosts. I've had an amazing week, eight days uh, being here. So thank you guys so much again. Anytime you want me back, I promise I will be here. 100%, man. It was a pleasure. <laughs>